Okay, welcome back. Um, this shortish video, I'm just going to go in now and tighten up some details. Um, we've got a few areas that became a little bit too noisy. Um, again, using the same old brushes, using the hard polish, just to knock back the bulbous, ballooned look of some of the scales. It's going to look like it's got wear and tear. Okay. I'll be jumping in with Dam Standard just to sort out where some of these scales have, are not as defined as I wanted them to be. There are no rules. This could be any way you want it to look. Okay, just check the front. Now I've got X symmetry on while I'm doing that non-symmetrical stuff at the front, but it doesn't really matter. It works out. Again, my clay build up in a circular alpha with a softish edge. Just building out these shapes and forms using inflate and the clay brush. Let's get some shape and definition to, definition to these. It's a mixture of clay build up, dam standard, and inflate. Be amazed at what you can do with just such a limited number of brushes. And there are one or two areas where the scales have almost become one, two are blended into one. You just go in there with the damn standard and the inflate. This was a bit of a mess. This didn't work out as well as a planned so but it's not lost. Clay build up with a slightly circular alpha. It's true of damn standard and inflate. We actually get a more interesting shape there than we had before. I'm just going to just drag out an alpha, old school, pick out the details. Check every part of your surface because you may miss something, somebody else will spot it straight away. There's nothing more annoying. We're going to address this ear area, so just using the clay build up, form a rudimentary shape. You can look at tortoises for this kind of effect with a dinosaur. And bizarrely, something that a lot of artists leave off prehistoric reconstructions the ear was incredibly important and there's lots of scientific information and evidence on the skull as to where the ear should have been I'm kind of interpreting this as like a, an open exposed eardrum it's a very primitive ear just forming the shape And you might notice that I flit about all over the model. If you focus too much on one area, that one area looks laboured. Flit about. It's your model after all, you can do what you like with it. So, just get some definition in here. There's that little glitch again. Control Z away. an interesting shape into the surface. Mask out the eardrum part. And we can go in and just drag an alpha on this. Those incredibly small scales suit the purpose here. And again, this is one of those stages, the longer you spend on it, the, the better it looks. Damn standard, just to pick out where we pushed it too far with the inflate and the smooth last time around. I 
A lot of this would have been lost at the polypainting stage, but it's nice to have the information there. And I'm almost pre-planning what I know the poly paint will do. These little high ridges. The techniques I'll show you with the poly painting, it'll really enhance them. Okay. This is actually a variation of the dam standard with a, a tiny focused little alpha. And it's easily achieved. You can go into alpha or just alpha and change the contrast of the alpha keys to experiment. Again, just putting back the details we lost there. randomly trying to get some cracks and folds into the skin. Okay. Using that same brush. These are the hard leathery cracks that would happen on a huge animal. We should in theory be adding feathers to this but I don't want to go there in this video because that's just a big pile of hurt and it is only the la over the last 10 or so years that the thinking is that these big theropods did have some kind of rudimentary primitive plumage but for now we're going to keep ours bald and again, these are quite spontaneous little lines and shapes because they would appear quite spontaneously on the surface. If you labour them, if you try and follow them slavishly, it looks like you just did exactly that. nice thing about the poly painting technique we'll use we're going to be using cavity masking a lot so we'll get really nice contrast in these cracks and folds okay just focusing on these hands again the hands are something you could spend a day on Okay, it's not looking too bad at all. No, just deep in these cracks and crevices. Just notice the way the light actually falls onto it, causing the shadows. Again, it's all about depth perception. And that's a practice skill. I believe everybody's got this ability. It's all about practice. Okay. Again, Old Faithful, Inflate. If you drag your Inflate across these etched lines, you get a really nice organic effect. You could use Pinch, but Pinch can be quite destructive to the surface. So there we have it. I could have spent a day just tweaking details, but for the purposes of the video, this is ideal. And in the next video, we'll texture the body using the Tyler Balalpas in Noisemaker. Okay, I'll see you soon.